Hi, so I'm sure most of us have got uh, various bits of equipment that come with a random assortment of um, these power adapters which can be annoying to keep track of and there's usually loads of them. Now that the world seems to have sort of standardised on USB-C it might be uh, useful to actually convert these to run on USB-C instead of the all these various adapters which not only sort of declutters all this stuff but also means that you're going to get the right voltage you, you know there's no risk of mixing up different adapters with different uh, voltages or, or polarities um, on different bits of equipment. A USB needs a little bit of protocol to tell the power supply what voltage you want um, fortunately there's quite a number of solutions to this if you search uh, BC trigger on AliExpress you'll come up with lots of little boards like this typically they'll either have um, dip switches or occasionally solder blobs for um, selecting the voltage Sometimes they come in specific single voltage versions. There's also ones like these which come as a plug. So for example, if you want to have a trailing need that plugs into USB-C socket, you can use one of these plugs. These cut tends to come in fixed voltage versions and the voltage is often set by a resistor so you can change them if you need to. And you can also get adapter cables like this which has got like a power jack to a USB. These tend to come in fixed voltages and they don't tend to label them so uh, that's a slight risk. None of these are particularly good for just replacing an existing equipment. I mean most equ most power jack equipment will tend to come with a you know, this type of connector. They, this is by far the most common one usually 2.1, sometimes 2.5mm centre pin. There's also a few variants, like for example the surface mount ones like this and vertical ones like that. So I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if you could get one of these USB-C boards that fit within the form factor of this, so you could just replace this in the equipment. So I sort of bored one evening and came up with this board. So this basically incorporates the chip to provide the uh, USB power, but in a form factor which fits basically within the form, form of these connectors and obviously depending on the piece of equipment you might, need, you might need to adjust the position for example if there's a thick case you might need to space this out a little bit to get the, the plug in without failing on the case maybe you need a larger hole so th there's a few different options for connecting on here generally I find if you use either this is thick 0.8mm tin copper wire or you could use sort of pins from pin headers um, and if you use two of them because obviously the um, the connector will generally have a slot so there's enough space to actually get, get this double wire in and that will generally be strong enough to actually hold it without anything additional but of course you could add some just epoxy it down or maybe make a th sort of 3D printed enclosure to um, give that some mechanical support and there's a number of connection options on here there's sort of basically four pads of positive and negative so depending on whether it's a centre positive or centre negative you can basically just turn the thing the opposite way around so on this one the um, this is negative and this is positive so this matches up with the uh, these pins on the uh, connector. But if you're using a um, particularly like musical equipment, often a centre negative, so you just you basically just flip this round, and you get the pins in the same position. Obviously, you can also mount it vertically if you wanted to. There's two solder pads here. Uh, without anything linked, it's nine volts, and you then just link either one or both pads to get the 12, 15, or 20 volt outputs. Uh, you can also solder to the, the shell of the um, USB-C connector again if you want some additional mechanical support. So I've already used these to convert a couple of things, brother label printer and a fairly big uh, socket. Um, obviously I could tidy that up by making like a little 3D printed um, sort of fascia, but that works. You can see it's rigid enough using those uh, using that thick tin copper wire. And this uh, LCR meter again, this had a slightly smaller one, I had to uh, hack the panel out a little bit to make it fit for that. And this is obviously particularly useful for things you don't use very often, so you've got like a pile of uh, mains adapters, you've got to find the right one whenever you need to um, charge stuff. Uh, now there are quite a number of these chips that do this function, um, if you look in on LCSC at the USB PD category. Now not all of these chips are exactly that, some of these are for example peripherals for microcontrollers, but there's quite a number of them, um, but there's a few fairly common ones. Um, I've got a resource page on my website which I've linked below, which includes links to some of the more common ones, but there are yeah, quite a lot of them now. For this design I decided to go with the WCH CH224K, um, mostly because it was in stock, it seemed to be quite widely used and uh, widely stocked and it had a package that was suitable, so that was really the only... Uh... So looking at the CH224 data sheet, there are actually quite a few variants of this um, in various packages with various features. The 224K seems to be the most sort of common popular one. I think it's not on this schematic signal, this is zero, this is actually the pad 
the centre pad there isn't actually a separate explicit ground pin so you can see it's available in sort of various different flavours of packages and this is the one that I'm using there's a few a few little details about this for 5 volts CFG1 is tied high now I, I don't care about 5 volts so I just nailed that low on the PCB and the other options are just set by the uh, CFG 2 and 3 things. Um, one thing that's really annoying is these pins do not have internal pull-ups, so they have to be either explicitly tied high or low, or need external pull-ups to uh, VDD, um, which I've put on the board. Also in terms of power, um, this has got an internal shunt regulator, I think it's 3.3 volts off the top of my head. Um, the problem with the schematic they give you is that this resistor here has to be low enough to get enough current to you know, guarantee the supply on the lowest 9 volt supply but also the problem with that is that at a 20 volt supply that's actually going to dissipate a lot of power for example 1k you know, 9 volts that's going to draw sort of 9 milliamps which is sort of okay but at 20 volts that's going to pull 20 milliamps which is 0.4 watts so that resistor is going to get very hot so that's why on my design I actually used a uh, low dropout regulator instead of this resistor to avoid that problem so obviously it's uh, going to be more efficient and you're not going to get that um, high heat dis dissipation if you knew it was 20 volts you could use a much higher value resistor here but the whole point is to create like a universal product that works over the whole range so to get that 9 to 20 volt range without stupid power dissipation then a regulator is pretty much the only way to do it also on this circuit they show the dm and d plus being connected now as far as i'm aware this is only for some of the more non-standard 5 volt standards for the 9 to 20 volts which is what I'm interested in it seems to work just fine without these connected and the reason I didn't want to connect these is I wanted to use these 6 pin USB, USB C connectors which have got a much wider pitch the the ones that include the um, USB DPDM have a much finer pitch and they're much more prone to solder shorts and so on so uh, I sort of eliminated those and again this this all seems to work just fine now I can't be bothered to actually sell these it's obviously a fairly small value item but what I've done is is, uh, on the link below there are, there are all the PCB files. I'll show you the pro go through the process of ordering these on JLC PCB. Uh, these are actually panelled up in fives. The problem is obviously if you just did, did as a one-off it actually works out moderately expensive so sort of five is a, sort of a reasonable number so, and then the minimum JLC order is five, five PCBs. You don't actually have to get more populated but basically five lots of five of these to give you a total of 25 comes to just under 100 bucks so it's about sort of four bucks each which is uh, fairly reasonable I think. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is upload the PCB file. Just drag it there. And what's in here is are your are your gerber layers. So you've got bottom, bottom ident mask. This includes the paste files. For assembly, JLC do not use your paste files. They generate the solder paste from their own uh, footprints. And any component which is not populated will not have solder paste on it. There's an additional layer here, plated slots. The um, the USB C connector has some plated slots for the uh, the body feet. Um, so those are specified on a separate layer here. So we've got our preview. Uh, quantity is five. And panelization panel, we've already panelized it, and we've got five columns in one row. And um, this doesn't matter if you're ordering bare PCBs, but if you're doing assembly, it needs to know this to know what, how many components need fitting. Um, thickness 0.8 millimeters. That should be everything, unless you want it in a funky color or something. Because we've got that plated slots layer, I generally put a I'd put a mark saying say plated. Slots in. just to make sure they uh, they see that so now we click on PCB assembly it needs to know which which size now this is going to be both sides and we have to specify the standard service not the economic service here uh, with standard you can also specify if you don't want all the PCBs assembled you can only assemble some of them here everything else will be should be correct with the default settings so go next now I'm not actually sure what this screen does, it just shows the PCB. I don't really understand why they put the screen here, it doesn't actually seem to do anything. So now we need two files, the BOM file and the CPL, component location file. So this is what these look, look like, this is the BOM file. Um, it needs these three headers, um, I think it pretty much ignores any other headings here. So we've got uh, footprint, 
component designator. Now, one important thing, when, you, when you've got multiple components, there's two ways to specify. Here's, one, for example, R1-3 for R1-3. to You can also do R1, R2, R3. What you can't do is R1, comma, 3. It doesn't understand that, and it will complain if you do that. So these can be um, values, or for example, here's some LCSC or GLC PC part numbers. There's a generic part number here. All these seem to work OK. One important thing, though, is do not leave any cell blank. I've had some really weird things happen with blank cells. It's like it screwed up the formatting of subsequent columns and all sorts of things. Or even if it's just some rubbish or placeholder or something, make sure there is something in every one of these um, cells. This is the CPL file, so this is basically designator, which layer of the board it's on, and the midpoint of where it is, yeah, the midpoint. So some software will just show you the centroid of the part. Um, the software I use has explicit pick and place points in the library. So for example, if you have parts that have offset pick points, it will deal with that. The rotation, I've never quite got to the bottom of where what the JLC's reference point is for rotation. And my component libraries are set up so that the... Um, zero rotation corresponds to the way the feeders on my machine work. If you define sort of there's you need to apply consistent change to that, um, you can just do that by a simple uh, formula. So for example if we needed to add 90, um, I'm not sure if JLC will, will understand it if you show more than 360 but that's how I normally do it. And then just copy that down and if you just move the rotation heading. You can leave these in place. You don't have to copy these values across. It seems to work fine. If you just leave that rotation header with the uh, modified values, that seems to work fine. So we drag our files into there. So our bomb file and our CPL file. Right. One word of warning, um, of course it's not doing it here, but if you click on that process immediately, it will sometime po sometimes pop up an error. That's not actually an error in the file, it's because it hasn't quite processed or uploaded the files properly. So it's always best just to like, you know, leave a couple of seconds before you click that icon just to uh, give it a chance to upload it. This took me ages to figure out because it kept throwing errors back that it was, and it actually wasn't an error at all. It was just simply that uh, it hadn't processed the file yet. Here we've got the list of our bill of materials. Now I've already gone through this once so I know everything's in stock and valid. Anything that it ha can't figure out an exact match for it will unselect here so because we know this is exact so for example it will say it doesn't exactly match and you give the option to look for, to check the component spec. Um, if you just mouse over here it will show you the full uh, component value so yeah absolutely check every single one of these because yeah, it could well get things wrong, it could get the package wrong so you really need to go through and check every single one of these. Um, if it's got it wrong, if you click on search here you can then type in um, searches for different parts, it will give, it will start off with a reasonable guess but you can type in uh, numbers. What's weird though is this search can be very strange, sometimes you can type in an LCSC part number and it doesn't find it but if you type in the generic part number it does so sometimes you need to do a little bit of uh, trial and error to get it to um, find it but say because this I've already been through and sorted all these files out this should all like, upload okay but it may be that yeah, for example if parts go out of stock then uh, you might need to, to tweak these. Uh, these quantities these will sometimes add additional parts for example for smaller parts it knows it there's some wastage for example at the yeah, where they cut the tape so it will generally add the wastage figures here. Um, this total cost is the complete cost of all the boards, which is slightly annoying, I'd, I'd sooner if, I'd prefer it if it just gave the uh, per board price. But this is really the importance of screen to spend time on and go through every single part, make sure it's correct. So go next, and now this is where it's basically confirming all our, all our placements. We can zoom in and use the right button to scroll around. So here, for example, we want to check that all the all the uh, polarities are right. They're fairly good at sort of showing all the pin one marks on the components. And for example, you can change, for example, if this, if it, again, I've been through and checked and, and fixed all this, but you can sort of change rotations. Uh, one thing which is really annoying, though, which it does completely wrong, is if you, for example, you want to change the rotations on multiple components. So it's control click. So what you'd want it to do is rotate those individually. What it actually does is it just rotates both of them, which is completely stupid and absolutely ridiculous but you've got a lot of one part that needs rotating it's probably best to go back to your CPL file and uh, rotate them there rather than do it here. You can flip between sides 
and we can see here we've we've got our um, USB-C connector. One thing I found is actually quite good. Uh, it's not on. The, I don't think you can see it on this board, but um, let's just try if we just use this jog to move it up. Where you have parts that have pins that go through holes in the PCB. I think cause it hasn't picked up the slots in this preview. Um, it's just showing holes, but it will actually show the parts showing through the holes in the board. So if you need to line a component up with um, holes in the PCB on the other side you can actually do that and it does actually show that through the holes which is uh, quite nice but because this doesn't have the slots you can't actually see that so that's basically it you, you know, make sure all your parts are in the right place make sure they're, they're the right way around and then just go to next and that will now give you your price and you can add it to your cart and place the order and away you go. Um, this is a description, this is for customs purposes. I don't know whether there's any difference in terms of what the actual charges are based on category. Uh, one other word of warning, uh, if you look up here on weight, it tends to quite often vastly over overestimate the shipping weight. On small boards it's not ridiculous, but on long boards in particular it can sometimes sort of default to using dimensional weight and you get some ridiculous uh, weight values. If that happens, send them an email saying, you know, please reweigh this before shipping it. It would be nice, I'd like them to actually have an option here where you could actually tell them to not charge you for the uh, shipping until they've packed it and actually weighed it. But you, you know, I have in the past emailed them and they've reweighed it and uh, refunded uh, an excessive estimate. And that's basically it, there's an option here down for the, the turnaround time and then just save the cart, pay for it. So I hope some people will find these useful. Um, there's a link down below to my website with resources, PCB files, etc. Um, the PCB is not done in KiCad, I'm afraid. Um, it's done in PCAD 2006, which will import into Altium. But it's a very simple board. If anyone wants to redraw it in KiCad, I'll happily add it to my um, website if you want to send it to me. But so you can just do, use the turnkey manufacturing for JLC just to sort of order some and it wouldn't surprise me if these appear on AliExpress at some point in the future which would probably make them even cheaper.